Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie, and I'm back home from the Carnival Celebration Eight Night Caribbean Cruise. So it's time to share my review. Hopefully you've already seen my ship tour and the check-in video. There's still a dining guide and more information on the entertainment coming in the next week. So be sure to subscribe and keep that notification on so you'll see all of my videos about cruises, all-inclusive resorts, and travel around the world. So let's get started. I'm gonna rank the different areas of the ship on a scale from one to 10. So we're gonna start with the cabin. I had a cove balcony cabin on deck five, cabin 5400. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. I think that it's a lovely cabin. I think they did a great job with this space. The point deductions are going to be for a couple things that don't make a lot of sense. One is there is a super heavy storage stool. I mean, it is so heavy. It's difficult to move around. The lid is heavy. Someone we know on the cruise dropped it on their foot and had a terrible bruise. It just, it doesn't make sense why there needs to be a piece of furniture that heavy in the cabin. The second thing, no outlets by the bed. Why do cruise lines keep building ships that don't have outlets by the bed. It's a CPAP user's nightmare. Now, this did have a USB charger underneath the reading light, but that's not gonna help folks who need a machine to breathe. The bathroom is very tight. It's a very small bathroom. I do appreciate how much space they gave to the shower, so while you're in the shower, it doesn't feel that tight, but going to the bathroom, getting ready for bed, it's very, very tight. I don't think there was enough storage. I needed an extra drawer. I needed one more drawer or one more set of shelves. I really missed having a proper nightstand with a drawer or having longer shelves where you could put up all your crew stuff. You know, your deodorant and your sunscreen and your sunglasses and your towel clips. All of that stuff needed a place to go and there wasn't really a great place to put it. And that was just for the two of us. Our cabin was designed for four people. It had the sleeper sofa and the bunk that comes down from the ceiling. I'm not sure how four people could share that cabin and have enough storage space. The next is overall ship condition. This was a brand new ship. We were on the fourth sailing. I'm still gonna give it a nine though. The ship had an odd odor, especially on our deck and in the theater. I think it might have been the carpet. I'm not sure if the carpet was aired out properly or whatever chemical it was treating with. It left a strange odor. It wasn't mildew or any type of mold or anything like that. It just had this weird chemical smell that affronted us every time we walked back into the cabin. And then I also noticed it in the theater. It also seemed like some things were still kind of getting worked out. It's part of the kinks of a brand new ship. So overall, looks great. I give it a nine. Casual dining. So this is not your sit down restaurants for dinner, but where you can eat breakfast and lunch or a casual snack in the afternoon. I give this ship a 10. They did a phenomenal job. There are so many places you can eat on this ship. The Java Blue Cafe has hot sandwiches. You have the big chicken for chicken sandwiches. Guy's Burgers. Blue Iguana Cantina for burritos and tacos. Java Blue on deck six has hot sandwiches for both breakfast, lunch, and into the evening, plus pizza, plus a deli. So lots of options here, 10, 10, 10. Sit down dining, so where you go in, you sit down, you order off a menu. I'm gonna give that a seven out of 10. We really struggled with service. The waiters were trying so hard and they were hustling. I mean, literally running in some cases. And I, I don't know if it's because they're understaffed. I don't know if it's because the way the app seats people, it overloads a waiter's section. So they have to run to try to get everyone their food quickly so that they're in and out within an hour, hour and a half. But it just felt rushed, felt like people were running and just really hustling. Maybe you could fix that by having a set dining time, by doing the early or the late. We had the any time, but still, if you have any time dining, you shouldn't feel like you're being abandoned. So we'd go for you know 30 minutes with no one checking on us, no one talking to us, to all of our food coming quickly, and then done. So that we'd be done in an hour. And that's really not the dining experience that I've had on Carnival before, or that I've come to expect. In terms of food quality, it was decent. It was what I've had on other ships. The other thing that I was not crazy about was the plates. Hopefully these are temporary plates. They are so ugly. I feel like I'm getting served 
in an institution. Like I'm at my local hospital grabbing a bite to eat while my aunt's getting surgery. It's terrible. And I know it seems silly and it shouldn't impact the dining experience, but for me it really did. I just didn't think the plates looked good. I didn't think the food looked good. The taste was there. There were a couple of missteps here and there with different items, but overall the taste was good, but these plates, whoa. What do you think? Am I overreacting? Do you like these plates? Now to specialty dining. So these are the food that you'd have to pay extra for. And we had a phenomenal experience for the three times we did it. We did chef's table, which was incredible. The service was over the top. The food was amazing. This is definitely a must do if you enjoy those multi-course tasting experiences. Bonsai Sushi is the best sushi restaurant at sea. We've been to sushi restaurants on all the other lines, a lot of other ships, and this ship had the best. It was the freshest tasting fish. It was presented beautifully. It was delicious. I love the short rib appetizer. The sushi was gorgeous. This sushi, it was a dollar a piece. I mean, unbelievable value. The rolls were great. The spicy tuna roll could have been a little spicier, but that's okay. But overall, terrific experience. We also had a great experience at Emerald's Bistro. We went there for breakfast. The shrimp and grits were terrific. The waffle was terrific. The service was great. So specialty dining gets a 10. Entertainment. So one thing we love about Carnival Cruises is the entertainment. I'm going to give this one an 8.5. And the reason is because the venues are so small. It's so frustrating to have to get there an hour and a half early to see a show at center stage when the show's only 45 minutes. We showed up 45 minutes before the Magnificent Circus show and there was not a chair to be found. At least in the Grand Spectrum Theater, they've adjusted this. They now don't open the doors until a half an hour before the show. So you don't have that same issue with all the seats being taken so early, but it really is a problem and hopefully it'll get better with future ships. They'll figure out something because it's really frustrating to have to show up two hours early or you're fighting people who are saving seats. It's just kind of a mess. I also didn't love the center stage shows. I know they get so much buzz and so many people love them, but I found Celestial Strings and the Magnificent Circle to be a little repetitive. I didn't love the choreography. I think maybe I like more dancing like you have in the Amor Cubano show, but it just felt like people were kind of walking around and singing. So I didn't love that. Now I did love the Evolution show and I'm going to talk more about it. Um, in the entertainment video, but that was tremendous. So the DJ put on a show one late night in center stage, musicians popped in. It was so much fun, absolutely incredible and a perfect use of that space. Overall for service, I'm going to give it an eight. The crew seemed tired. They had been working so hard for so many months, getting the ship up and running. Of course they're tired, but that also makes me wonder how much they're being scheduled. Are they understaffed? The waiters were hustling. Bar service could be really slow at some of the bars, especially back at the Pagan Anchor Smokehouse. So I just, overall, I'm gonna give it an eight. Value, nine. I think Carnival does deliver a lot of value for what's included. Now, it's not a 10 because they have cut back on some things over the last year. They've cut back some hours on pizza. They've cut back some room service. They've cut back some soft service. We noticed that the portions in the dining room were smaller, which was a good thing to us. We didn't mind, but I noticed some other folks were complaining about it a little bit. So overall, I think it's still a great value to cruise on Carnival. I'm going to give it a nine. So that leads us to the overall score of 8.5. So this is a great cruise. I mean, to have a 10 out of 10 on a cruise means I was wowed all the time with everything. So we had a great time. We thought it's a beautiful new ship. They're doing a great job with the entertainment. There's some service kinks and some dining kinks that'll probably get worked out over time. So I definitely recommend it for a future cruise. What do you think? Have you been on the Carnival Celebration yet? what was your rating out of 10? Let me know in the comments and be sure to catch all of the videos in the Carnival Celebration series. So I'll post them here on this page so you can easily click and check them all out.